Hello and welcome to part four of my keeving series which is a bit ironic because I'm looking at this in this vessel here and I can't see the signs I'm looking for so it doesn't seem to be doing an awful lot it's been more than a week now since I pressed this um, and there should be um, like a uh, brown, what's called a chapeau brun, brown hat that means in French, on the top here to indicate that it's keyed. So I can show you an example that I've got in another vessel here. So firstly, around the side here, you can see there's a lot of mess around the side here. So something's obviously been going on. And then if you look in here, oh, sorry. So we've got this kind of a bubbly uh, brown head. And if I stick something in there to pull it out, you can I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see it's quite gelatinous. Um, I've got a little jug here somewhere I can pop it in. Yeah, there we go. Some more of it out. There we are. Can you see that? So that should be covering the surface. So what that is, it's um, the pectin in the juice has come out of suspension and reacted with the tannins and it's, it creates this this kind of slimy goo and um, so by taking that out um, I'm reducing the it's not just the pectin and the tannins that there's the nutrients that the yeast uses well the yeast itself as well all gets tangled up in in that stuff uh, so what happens by removing it you can then create a what's called a must or a liquor that's only got limited fermentability so it means the yeasts won't ferment it dry but they'll they'll leave sugars behind and so that's why uh, Normandy ciders have uh, lower strength but sweeter uh, flavour and like higher higher gravity finishing gravity than um, uh, just a normally fermented uh, cidre anglais I suppose it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know just normally fermented stuff anyway yeah so that's what I wanted to show you so what I'm thinking of doing I've got some op some options here because the lower one hasn't worked yet if I leave it too long um, and there's no activity so we go back down and have another look at it so if I leave this too long like this it will start to there. There'll be little clumps on the top that start going mouldy, because the the fermentation activity releases CO two normally, and that prevents the, the mould from growing on the surface. So I've got. To, I'm going to have to do something with this now. So I've got several options. I could. I mean, the easiest thing for me to do is to take another cider and rack it off and then use the dregs to seed this with something that will ferment and the other option I'm thinking of is the one that has worked here of moving that top topping this one up with that one that's why I've got it up on uh, these um, that's why I've got it higher up on these um, uh, trays here I'm thinking of um, I'll perhaps siphon this one down, but siphoning is is difficult. With um, so when 
So with a normal fermentation, you don't you don't get that gunky, the gunky brown, the chapeau brun. Uh, so I su I suspect what's happened is this is a, a partial keeve, and it's done that, but it's now starting to ferment. Um, and if I try to rack it off, I think there'll be um, gooey bits floating around in there that will um, tend to, to block up my my racking tube, my siphon. So, um, yeah, I'll have to have a think about how to do it. And, um, yeah, anyway, hopefully that's some interesting information for you there. The, the other option that I've got is to um, I've tasted I've tasted the juice that's not really doing anything and it doesn't have a lot of tanning in it, it and it's and it's very sweet so I could use it I could blend it with um, another cider so if I've got ciders that are overly dry and yeasty I could perhaps top them up with this um, to try and balance that out a bit so that's another option I've got all right that's all for now. Bye.